Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to our Keeping Business Moving webinar powered by Lala Move. We are live on BFM's Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So wherever you are viewing us from, thank you for being with us. Now, the festive season is upon us, which means the shopping season is well and truly underway. Uh, with this influx, how do you ensure your customers receive their products on time? Uh, how much planning is required, whether you're a B2B or a B2C business? How do you ensure the peak season rush for goods and services are handled as efficiently and smoothly as possible. Well, we've invited industry experts from three different segments to shed some light on the local retail ecosystem and how deliveries and logistics can increase a business competitiveness during peak shopping seasons. So let me introduce our panelists today. First up, we have Jane Tay, Managing Director, Lala Move Malaysia. Hi, Jane. Hi, Freda. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Next, we have Vernon Chua, CEO in Nerja Labs. Hi, Freda. Thanks for having me on. Good afternoon. And last but not least, Christy Ng, founder of Christy Ng Shoes. Hey. Hello. Hi. Nice. Thanks Hi. for having me. Hi, Christy. Good to see you again. Now, for those of you who have any questions, please do post them in the comments section and we'll get to them a little later. So I'm going to start off a, a question for everyone here. Um, what have been some of the pertinent developments in your segments that you've seen in the last two years? I'm going to ask Christy first. Um, okay, I think um, what, what we've observed is a sharp increase in e-commerce sales. I think with our e the e-commerce segment of our business has grown uh, like 400 percent you know, since uh, the onset of COVID, so I think, uh, and we are seeing these numbers um, continue to slowly rise. You know that, you know, we, at first we thought that uh, the e-commerce uh, orders would drop after COVID, uh, when the lockdown lockdowns have been lifted. But we still see that uh, the baseline post COVID is still higher than pre COVID. Hmm. Right. Okay. And of course, coupled with uh, the the festive season as well. Yes. Right. Um, and uh, what about you, Vernon? What have you been seeing? Well, uh, pretty much what uh, following on what Christy said, that there's clearly been a surge in uh, online shopping uh, and online food deliveries. And I think there has been reports that have come out that said that online spend per person is going up to about 50% year on year. Uh, so that's quite a massive change in uh, customer behavior. Right. And so this trend that is forcing more and more uh, those uh, brick and mortar retailers, those your supermarkets, your right. retailers, your pharmacies, your F and B operators, it's uh, forcing them to bring themselves online and to uh, go digital in order to cater to this uh, shift in customer behavior. And right. online demand and on demand delivery is very much a part of the, this trend. Mm. So online, offline, more work for Jane. Jane, uh, <laughs> what have you seen uh, as some pertinent developments uh, in your segment? Thanks, Reda. So right here, uh, we observed that there's a growing dependency on on-demand delivery for sure, especially during the, the lockdown times. But even pre-lockdown, we are seeing that people are still uh, choosing to stay at home, especially right now. That's the Omicron that is um, mm. pretty scary. Uh, and yes, our government is still working on the booster shots. So uh, the change, like um, uh, Vernon said, that the change in terms of consumer behavior and how businesses are adapting adapting themselves to this change uh, mm. is very crucial, especially during these times. Um, mm. There's a growing number. Uh, of course, FMB is indispensable, especially during pandemic, but there's growing number uh, in terms of larger items such as furniture, electronic appliances, and across uh, throughout this period of time. And it has definitely shaped the way we, we live. I think it's mm. a new lifestyle, um, mm. not, just a, just, not just a consumer behavior change. Right. Right, it's a new lifestyle right now. You no, know, Vernon, you know, over the last two years, uh, we've spoken about uh, digitization and e-commerce and on-demand delivery started being a huge part of the ecosystem because you've come on a lot. Uh, what interesting trends are you seeing in that space and the role of on-demand delivery? Hmm. Uh, so, yeah, so I have it. Thanks, guys, for always having me on uh, to talk about this. I love the wax lyrical about digitization. Um, yes, so, I mean, the last two years, once again, has forced uh, retailers and F&B operators to really up their game and, and mm. get into that space, right? Um, and where it used to be a nice-to-have, let's, let's take on-demand delivery as an example, where it used to be a nice-to-have for uh, retailers and F&B operators because it's, a, it's an extra convenience for their customers right. and a way for them to attract new customers from outside their typical service area. But now, it's no longer just a, uh, a convenience, nice. it's a mm. necessity. 
So um, every retailer and F&B operator that wants to thrive and grow will need to factor in uh, online customers and how to handle that last mile uh, delivery mm. for them. But what is also inter an interesting trend within that uh, is that it has actually created additional challenges um, for retailers and, and for mm. businesses, right? So I'll, I'll give you a, a, an interesting example. Uh, so we know, let's, let's take the F&B because that's a, an interesting one. Uh, popular online delivery platforms uh, eat a lot of their margins. Right. And before the pandemic, this was a nice to have for the business because most of their customers would still dine in, about 90% would still dine in or do takeaways. Uh, so the cost of the online delivery platforms was justifiable uh, as a, yeah. in a way, if you look at it as a way of attracting new customers mm. or helping to turn over their inventory. Mm. But during the lockdown, it became almost 100%. Of their business mm. which means their profit margins uh were very small or negligible right. so what we are noticing now a trend is that more and more restaurants are starting to offer their own delivery service or partnering with lala move uh, mm. in order to or services like lala move in order mm. to better govern their costs and protect their margins so that's been an interesting uh pattern of behavior we're seeing right Okay, so not not a nice to have, a need to have. Uh. Yes. Uh, so so I guess like Jane, the appeal of Lala Move is uh, on demand, customizable, customizable nature, right? What are the objectives in providing uh, customers with a scalable logistic solution? It's, it's definitely very, very important for businesses to have the agility as well as the customizability for all types of delivery. So regardless, it's a small item, large item, as you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. anyone can enjoy the same level of speed as well as convenience. So uh, delivery is uh, among uh, delivery among consumers as well as businesses are actually very, very different. And if you drill down into the business segment, the delivery needs for uh, various industries uh, are not the same either. So mm. uh, retail business, we are, we are looking at on-demand delivery for better customer experience. And uh, wholesalers, on the other hand, uh, they, are, they are relying on on-demand delivery to serve as an alternative fleet to boost their operational efficiency during, especially during the peak season. So mm. with this flexibility uh, and the wide range of delivery fleet that we have, um, they are able to scale up and down their business. So during mm. the peak season, you want to cope with the search, the opportunity is right in front of your eyes. Right. And if you are operationally, uh, you don't have an agile uh, delivery solution, it will be very difficult for you to cope with this demand. And mm. I mean, during peak season, because we are uh, going with this pay per use model and there's no commitment. So if you use us for, for January for your peak season, for, mm. yeah, go ahead. Um, but for, for down times, you can look into optimizing the rest of your costs. So I think it's, it's time to also look into uh, businesses to look at the bigger picture. Um, they mm. need to understand how they are operating and how they can be agile in, in coping with all this search for, of demand. Right. And, and it's very predictable when the search is going to be, right? Raya, that kind of thing. So it's a, a part of your business planning. you got to look into this, right? Um, yeah. You know, Christy, you've been an entrepreneur for, for 10 years now, I think a little over 10 years, right? How has consumer behavior changed and what are the expectations when it comes to shopping and goods delivery? Because once upon a time, I remember going to your house and, you know, picking up some shoes. Uh, my behavior has changed. But what have you seen? I think um, consumers are very comfortable buying online now compared to 10 years ago. Um, I think the om whole omni-channel experience works, helps, you know, uh, offline, online, online, offline. Uh, having both uh, is very important for all retailers. And yeah, I think uh, the biggest change in uh, consumer behavior over the past 20, uh, two years is definitely mm. on uh, the the ease and, you know, um, and... Uh, the ease and the increase of uh, online purchase. I think this is what I see. And uh, you need retailers need to make it very easy to uh, for their clients to purchase online and returns have to be done seamlessly. Uh, and um, you know, option for in-store pickup when you purchase online is also very important. So these are some right. of the trends I notice uh, 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 in retail. Right. And you will see like this kind of behavior won't be temporary even when the pandemic is over some of these, yes. these behaviors, right? You, you, you're used to convenience, you're used to ease, right? Yes. Um, and also like in terms of stock inventory, right? One of, the, one of the things that you have to be concerned about, how has opening multiple brick and mortar stores uh, changed the way you manage operational efficiency? So does delivery and speed of delivery factor into your branding and long-term image among your customers? 
yeah, I think consumers uh they ex- they expect the items to to be delivered to them on time, fast. Mm. You know, efficiency and uh, speed is very very critical because if you don't deliver fast enough, they will not buy again. And right. if you deliver fast enough, uh, chances of them repeat repeating and buying more is even is there. Uh, and people like uh, consumers, are, especially in Peninsular Malaysia, uh, it, uh, they expect their item to be delivered in. No, no more than 48 hours, probably in right. 24 hours. I buy today, I expect it to come tomorrow. It, it has right. become like that. Right. Yeah. And I think it's, I think like customers, they'll expect it faster and faster. That's, that's, yes, that's faster. human nature, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe predictive analytics before you even press the button, the, the, the thing, the item yeah. should be there. Uh, for those of you who just joined us, whether you're on YouTube, on LinkedIn, or Facebook, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the comment section. We talk about keeping business moving because it is a very important thing, uh, regardless of any timing, but more so during the festive season when everybody is you know, doing a lot of deliveries. I've got Jane, Jane Tay from Lala Move here, Vernon Chua from Energia Labs, and Christy Ng from Christy Ng Shoes. Jane, now when we think of deliveries, right, we usually think of products shipped to customers in a B to C environment, right? Uh, but a huge part it's actually from the B2B environment. So how does Lalamu support businesses in the B2B space? So just now we talk about how you are able, with a flexible uh, delivery solution, you are able to scale up and down your business. Mm. Uh, aside from that, operating uh, to meet the spike in terms of demand, to capitalize the opportunity is also very, very crucial during this time. And at the shortest time to be your own fleet, it comes with a lot of headache. And, right. and also like the solution behind it the back end part of it. Um, it's not something can, that can be set up overnight. So right. um, with our services uh, on the B2B segment, what we do help is uh, we help to connect for over 40,000 uh, active drivers, uh, all sorts of vehicle types. Uh, we also have long haul delivery service uh, where we can support interbranch delivery. It's just like Christy, probably something that she, mm. she has to uh, deal with, uh, ensuring that your, your branch is well stocked uh, and also um, some... Uh, B2B, they also have multiple premise and also warehouse. So how do you uh, cover the meat mouth delivery part of which is a part of your supply chain? Mm. Yeah. With the with the paper use delivery, you can you can scale up and down your business, whether is it uh, serving your B2B customers or, all, or also your B2C customers. Right. You know, I always find that, you know, when you're in business, whatever your core business is to focus on your core business. And when you start putting, you know, another element of the business, which is in part the cost, it looks it looks easy on the surface, but it's not right. There are a lot of factors to take into consideration. Uh, You know, Vernon, based on uh, your expertise and experience as well, how do concepts and tools like e-commerce, e-wallet and on-demand delivery help businesses remain agile in a post-pandemic environment and do they also factor into branding when we'll get to post-pandemic i I can't wait (laughs) well you know um even before the pre uh, the pandemic so the pre-pandemic era uh, Mm. there's a very grim statistic and that Mm. is that uh, 20 percent around 20 percent of all new businesses will fail within the first year and by the fifth year almost 50 percent will fail so i mean Pandemic aside, uh, doing business, uh, retail, F&B, is always going to be fraught with challenges and business owners have to keep innovating and improving uh, to ensure their success. Mm. So tools like e-commerce, uh, on-demand delivery, they're all there to help businesses reach a wider customer base and also to increase their revenue streams and improve their efficiencies. Uh, e-wallets are there to help it make it easier for the customer to pay you and for you to collect and manage your cash so you don't have to keep so much cash on premise. Mm. Uh, and the thing is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the pandemic has now made these tools uh, the expected norm, right? Especially in the Klang Valley and in the urban city areas around Malaysia. So mm. if you think about it, the Klang Valley alone accounts for around 50% of all retail spend nationwide. Mm. So if you are a retail or an f and owner and you are operating in an urban area and want not to just survive, but to thrive mm. and to grow, you will need to adopt these tools uh, to remain, just to remain in the game. Mm. And so here's the thing. I mentioned uh, earlier that most businesses are going online and going right. digital. So when you, you as a business owner are going online and or going digital, the thing is all your competitors are doing the exact same thing. Mm. So you will now need to find a way to differentiate yourself from all the noise that your competitors 
uh, making, which you know brings us to the question of uh, branding that you raised, right? So, uh, and when you talk about branding, customer experience or the customer journey uh, is a very vital part of that whole uh, right. aspect, right? So, custom, the thing we have, we are understanding now, and I think you've mentioned it earlier, Freda, is that customers behave very differently uh, nowadays mm. uh, in a physical store uh, as when compared to when they're shopping online. So on the online store, convenience is everything. Uh, but in the physical store, uh, it's the experience and the touch and feel. Right. You know, they want to touch, they want to feel, they want to experience, right? So understanding how your customers behave in uh, both contexts, in online and offline terms, uh, in terms of their transaction behavior, their patterns, how they interact and mix with your products, uh, their wallet sizes, it will actually go a long way in you understanding your customer journey and in helping you to craft out uh, campaigns to help keep them immersed um, in your brand. Right. I, I want to ask Chrissy this, right? What what kind of behavior are you seeing online, offline, you know, um, when you, you know, the whole, yeah, what, what kind of behavior are you seeing? I think uh, uh, generally for lower ticket price items, consumers mm. are more willing to buy online. But for higher ticket price items, more expensive products, they prefer to buy offline. So th this right. is something that I see. So if your product is a couple hundred bucks, then I think you uh, they the consumers will feel more comfortable buying it offline. Right. Uh, and uh, you need to have very very good and clear, very flexible uh, exchange policy mm. um, to make it work. Or not, they won't dare to buy. Uh, but generally, uh, lower ticket price items move very very quick online. It's actually mm. easier to sell lower ticket price items online compared to offline. Right. Right, which means which means more work for for Lala Move, right? Uh, you know, so so Jane, uh, you know, the holiday season is also a time for shopping and retailers, right? Uh, they'll try to chart their rebound from sluggish sales uh, during the early days of lockdown, right? What kind of surge are you noticing this year, and is revenge shopping a factor? So uh, the the trend that we observe actually uh, is quite equal, but between. Uh, the online as well as offline. I think we all tasted the honey during the lockdown times. And I, I think yeah. we are, frankly speaking, we, we have adapted to it. So, um, and, and recent news, there's a lot of like congestions in the mall. A lot of people are also afraid to bring their family and, and also to go out to, to do physical shopping. So mm. our the, in terms of delivery volume, we are still growing. Uh, day on day, in month by month, uh, and it also surpassed the pre-pandemic. It has definitely surpassed the pre-pandemic, which is a right. 2021 delivery volume. Also, we have surpassed it. So um, this, this proves that uh, there's a strong reliance on online shopping, despite the fact that they, they can actually shop the, the item physically. Um, although there will be a difference in terms of basket skies, but if you have a wide range of um, collection or a wide range of products, yeah, different products will sell at different platforms. So you need to relook into how you can adjust that and to serve both your online as well as your offline customers. Mm -hmm. And frankly speaking, revenge shopping is definitely a thing. Right now, we still can't travel. Um, yeah. Where else are you going to spend your money, right? So this phenomenon has showed that our, our consumers uh, have adjusted themselves in this, in this, and businesses should also adjust themselves. Yeah, during the pandemic, uh, everyone strives to survive. Right. Uh, once you survive, what you're gonna do? You need to thrive. Otherwise, right. like non said, right? Your business, if you are not able to differentiate yourself, it will be difficult for you to bring your bring your business to the next level. So, right. they should definitely start equip uh, equipping themselves with uh, efficient and as well as agile digital solutions to assist them to grow their business. Right. And and we know being going online is not even a competitive advantage anymore. As you were saying, it's a need to have, right? So then taking that forward is is the branding, right? Um and uh so you're talking about revenge shopping through and I, I generally don't like going to malls, but I had to go the other day and it's like, you know, what pandemic because it was full of people, right? Um right, and in um just just what Christy was saying as well, right? In terms of revenge shopping, you can never have enough shoes, right, Christy? Um so, Vernon, where does the bottleneck usually happen during shopping seasons, right? And how can all parties, be it retailers, suppliers, delivery and logistics providers, prepare for these surges ahead of time? It's like, it's like we never learn. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, Freda, besides the traffic jam, um, mm. the supply chain is always tested uh, during the festive seasons, right? right. Um, because, you know, the manufacturers and the logistics providers are trying to predict uh, demand and try to make sure that they are able to deliver 
the necessary inventory for their merchants. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to the question of how can we better prepare, um, it's always worthwhile to look at your historical sales data to see right. what your customers' spending patterns, spending behavior was like in the last few years, and mm -hmm. you see whether you know is there a growth uh, in that in that pattern. And you also want to analyze whether you are constantly facing um, out of stock situations mm -hmm. uh, versus customer demands. And I know some business owners uh, may think that going out of stock is, is a good sign. But actually, economically speaking, uh, it, is, it more likely means that you've lost out on potential revenues and mm -hmm. that you are inadvertently driving your customers to your competitors. Mm -hmm. So understanding your customer consumption patterns and making sure you have adequate inventory to meet those demands uh, will be extremely useful uh, in this game. Right, so right. it's also important to remember that it's not just if you're a merchant, if you're an FB operator or a retailer, this, uh, this uh, situation, uh, this supply chain situation is not just your problem because you are part of an ecosystem, right? So mm. in your ecosystem, you have your suppliers, you have your vendors, you have your uh, logistics partners. And, you know, you know, and if they don't understand the kind of consumption patterns that your customers may have, they may not be able to supply you uh, enough on time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, we encourage our, class, our clients, our, our merchants, our F&B operators too, and retailers to share this information with their ecosystem so that they can better prepare as well. Uh, in right. fact, we are helping our merchants to uh, monetize their consumption data with FMCGs and uh, market research organizations in real time, just so that they can have this data so that they, their suppliers, their vendors, their partners can have more accurate production planning. So, yes, uh, right. anyone of you who's sharing now, please share your data in your ecosystem. Uh, right. It helps everyone in the long run, and you may actually make money out of it. Right. And, you know, you were saying it's, it's a bit of planning, you know, just looking at past sales. And I, I maybe it was difficult last year because it was such a different year from your usual year. But generally, with a bit of planning, uh, you can do that. Jane probably faced a lot of people with last minute, and, and that's that that affects the bottleneck as well, right? Uh, we have a question for Jane. I'll get to that later. It's a very cute question. I think it's a very important question, but we'll get to that. You know, Christy, you used uh, to the e-commerce ecosystem by now. So how do you prepare and manage logistics during these peak seasons? I think it's very important for um, the for logistics to be integrated with our e-commerce platform. So we've mm -hmm. done integration with all our logistic partners. So the minute the order comes in, the airway bill is immediately churned out. You know? right. So I think that's very important. So uh, logistic providers, uh, they need to have uh, ready, ready plug, plug and play kind of integration to right. so that uh, they can integrate to all the different e-commerce platforms available in right. the market. I think that's very critical because processing orders, uh, if you have lots of orders, it, takes lots, uh, it can take up a lot of time. Right. So what we have in place now uh, to ensure that you know we are efficient is we have fully integrated um, our e-commerce platform to all the different logistic providers. And we have also like... Uh, uh, already predetermined, like you know, which route we use, we use which provider. You know, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a overseas order, which provider we're going to use. If it's a very bulky item or very heavy item, which provider we're going to we are going to use. Uh, so things like that. So uh, this is how we manage uh, our e-commerce. Uh, aspect is very important. The processing mm. speed is very important mm. uh, during uh, peak period. Uh, but right. we do but yeah when you when you're integrated it's very easy the data is all available in front of you and things happen a lot quicker you need less manpower to process the orders so yeah right yeah, uh so uh, because you you've been like so you've been in business for 10 years and you started with off online first and then offline right when did this sort of like uh, realization on 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 improving on your distribution come about you know in the third or fourth year of business or like or is it from the get go you know, just your experience, right? And I guess a less the point is, what is the lesson learned? You wish you did it earlier. You know, what what sort of thing would you would you share with to, to people viewing in? Um, I think we started uh, e-commerce in 2012. We went into brick and mortar in 2016 before the pandemic. Mm. So we had a good three years in brick and mortar. We did really really well. Um, mm. I think a lot of the uh, spending still happens offline. Uh, this is pre-pandemic. Right. People still spend offline. Uh, offline spending is still going to exist. Mm. Uh, it will not completely fade away, uh, but it just has to be complemented with 
strong e-commerce. Uh, you need to be omnichannel. And um, what mm. what I could have done earlier, uh, I think, I think, uh, I think that I think we're barely scratching the surface for e-commerce. You know, I like right. especially over the past uh, forty eight months, right? I've been I you know we've grown so much in terms of e-commerce. We're we're getting orders from so many different countries. I feel like we're mm. barely scratching the surface the surface, and we could. And I think if done correctly, you know, if we continue to scale in the way we're doing, we can definitely, uh, we can, we will, we will be able to grow very uh, exponentially because uh, right. because the world is your oyster, you know. Uh, right. You know, before this, I was always thinking about local market, you know, always selling, you know, within Malaysia, you know, and I, and the minute the minute you start selling to countries like China, to mm. Germany, or you know, to. Uh, where, people, where their population is a lot larger than Malaysia, right? Uh, then you start to see, wow, there's a lot of money to be made. Right. So the minute when we started to ship to Philippines, China, Germany, and other parts of the world in, in meaningful volume, then we start to feel that, wow, you know, the world is the world is really, really big. And if you get your, if you get your e-commerce done right, and mm. uh, you make it easy enough for foreigners to pay uh, and to mm. buy on your site, and you are easily discovered by all these foreign shoppers, Mm. then you will be able to make a lot of money. So right. what I would have done earlier, I would have uh, done it more aggressively. You know, I would have done it, I would have market more aggressively and I'll go for the low-hanging fruit, those countries where it's easy to ship to, right. where duties and customs won't be a big issue. Those will be the low-hanging fruit. Um, so you need to know what is the minimum duties at all the different countries that you're targeting and for your every product has a different threshold value so you need to know which country what's the threshold value and um, and target those countries like like for you know once you know where the low hanging fruit is you can milk it Right, right. Okay, so new new delivery concerns, but you know, uh, yeah, start thinking global, right? Now, Jane, how does a company like Lala Move deal with sudden surge in demand uh, from both retailers and customers, especially you know, especially like during now? Uh, Freda, as you mentioned just now, um, it's it's quite predictable. We mm. have uh, all races, Chinese, Malay, Indian. So mm. the festive is pretty much set, and uh, the year end sale pretty much something that we've had experienced online or offline. So right. um, with with our year-on-year -year data, we look into uh, preparing sufficient uh, delivery partners to meet the search, especially during the peak season, mm -hmm. and uh, constantly engaging our drivers, um, driver base of all, all types of vehicles, allow us to, also allowing them this flexibility where they can generate an income with us part-time uh, all full-time uh, mm. we know of some nine to five that actually uh, during the weekends they want to generate additional income just for the festive period they are more than welcome to come and, and serve the community so uh, this this initiative is really su to support the local driver community which consists right. of mainly the b40 group and uh, by providing job opportunities that are accessible to all walks of life um, aside from that, we are also expanding our service to cover more areas, um, not just serving the, not just fulfilling the orders on the local intercity, but also uh, interstate uh, delivery demand. So speeding, speeding up the interbranch delivery process, as you mentioned just now for the B2B clients to meet customer expectation uh, is, is crucial this point of time. So we got to get our fleet ready before the actual festive hit right. or the actual peak hit. Right and, and keep them engaged. Right, so just just get them on board because you know it's gonna come, and then you know you better be prepared for that, right? Okay, I got a question here from Zainal, which I for Jane, and I think this is an important question for all Malaysians about Musang King. Uh, do you guys do perishable items uh, delivery? For example, Musang King is the pricing higher, and do you pick up at site? How do you cover? How do you mask the smell? Is my question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do we do perishables. Uh, we have API integration with a lot of food aggregators, as Renan just mentioned just right. now. A lot of um, F and B guys they are trying to uh, disconnect themselves from uh, platforms that charges commissions. So mm -hmm. in terms of perishable goods, yes, we do uh, we do provide delivery service, and we also have cold chain delivery. So mm -hmm. Musang King, if we, if it's chilled, you want a cold chain to ensure the freshness. We do have that as well, and. Intercity, you can do it mm. in the in cross border, uh, cross states, uh, interstate mm. 
it's also possible. The pricing is higher car, coal truck versus right. the, the normal uh, trucks. So uh, I think you just got to look into how can you optimize the volume of the truck and uh, in terms of pricing, what, 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 you're, what you are looking at. Right, right. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Alvin, but I think it's more suitable for, for Ringgit and Sense, uh, your, your questions around the area. Okay, so 2022, we're, you know, two weeks into the new year. How should companies prepare for 2022 with more people preferring to shop online and receive their purchases uh, via delivery than ever before? So, you know, what should we be looking at? I'll ask this to Vernon first. Uh, thanks, Frida. Um, well, Firstly, they need to adapt to the new environment, first and mm. foremost, right? And in adapting, they need to make sure that their inventory is adequate, make sure that their supply chain is there, make sure that their last mile logistics is also taken care of and organized. But mm. they definitely should not just stop there. As I mentioned earlier, all your competitors uh, are going to be online too. So there is going to be a need to differentiate yourselves, right? The thing about online shopping is that um, unless you've branded yourself well, uh, customer loyalty is actually lower, right? right? So, yeah, so you need to understand your customer behavior and the customer behavior is changing rapidly. So it's important that you have the tools to understand these changes and so that you can quickly react and respond to them and build your customer journey so that you actually build your brand and in doing so, build your loyalty with your customers. Right. Do you still see apprehension with businesses? Are they still uh, apprehensive about going online, that whole aspect? And why would they still be apprehensive? Um, you know, you always fear what you don't understand. And mm -hmm. so especially, if, well, when, when you're talking about the, the younger business, the, the people who, uh, the younger business entrepreneurs, they're mm -hmm. very quick to adapt or even if they're middle-aged. But if you're an old family-run company you've, uh, you, the, and the owner is 60, 70 years old, then it's going to be, uh, uh, they don't understand it, right? And right. So it's always going to be challenging for them to adapt. So there's, that's why the government's taking on all these programs to try and educate the market, uh, giving them grants and, and telling them, look, we will help you uh, all the way through uh, mm -hmm. so that you can actually come and compete. Uh, in in, in uh, companies where there's a younger generation taking over, also less resistance. Right. Right. Okay. So they, they understand a little bit more. Yeah. If uh, for, for those of you who are watching us, whether on YouTube, LinkedIn or Facebook, if you have any questions, uh, do post them in the comment section. We'll get to them. Uh, Christy, right. How should companies prepare for 2022? I know with, as you were mentioning, more people preferring to shop online um, and receiving the purchases via delivery. So the question is, how are you preparing for 2022? Uh, we've got some really <laughs> exciting lineups for 2022. Um, I think um, we we'll make uh, we're gonna make we, we, we hope to uh, make a really um, do something really audacious this year well this right. is my tenth year in business right. so you know they say after 10 years you must make sure you do something big mm. so <laughs> we will be expanding to Vietnam we'll be opening our first store in Ho Chi Minh City this year mm. so that's uh, big for us right. um, and then we hope to ship more uh, uh, via e-commerce throughout uh, Asia Pacific, right. uh, and how should companies prepare? I think you should. I think we should all look into uh, really strategic moves. You know, what mm. kind of moves can we can we make for our business that mm. can you know quadruple or you know triple the growth? You know, uh, very quickly. I think we should think of strategic ways to grow, right. um, and so like uh, find that find that that strategic way to grow and try to. Um, skill it right right and of course just wondering as well when you talk about expanding uh, a large part of that will also be online i'm sure if you go to vietnam it's online offline that's also a consideration yes. right that yes. you have to you know so it can't just be one way uh jane uh yes how should companies prepare for this year how should they prepare i think they need to relook like we mentioned just now, it's not about surviving anymore. You need to thrive. You need to differentiate yourself. You need to understand your customer needs. So mm -hmm. this time around, I think businesses need to uh, come up with a strategy plan uh, mm -hmm. that is sustainable for their growth, not artificial growth. And right. that way they are able to survive uh, and thrive. Um, right. Surviving is, is, is not good enough. I, I think a lot of, uh, there, there's also a lot of new businesses that pop up during the pandemic. 
due mm. to loss of jobs. So during this time, you need to take a step back. Should you be delivering the item yourself or should you channel the energy to focus on your core portfolio, your business portfolio mm. and building uh, what's important with your knowledge uh, after running your mm. business? I'm sure you've obtained some knowledge and how can you come up with a strategy approach to grow and scale? Right. Right, we've got a question here from Brandon, and I guess it's for you, Jane. So, will Lala Moo provide services identical to uh, Grab Food and Shopee Food to join the competition as well as boost income for delivery partners? Um, I think we we don't uh, do that because mm-hmm. right now uh, our our business model is actually very different. We don't just focus on F and B. We don't just focus on perishable right. items we we move from small items all the way to your large items so we have two wheelers uh the mm. motorcycle all the way until five ton trucks mm. and uh it's uh, like supply chain is crucial part of every business uh whether right. it's 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 um, from your warehouse distribution whether it's a mid mile whether it's last mile and it's 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 all part of our ecosystem uh and hence we we actually won't be looking specifically in just food right right will you help move my sofa so thank you uh if there are any i'm just wondering if there are any more questions uh we'll give it a second or so two seconds or so if not um any any uh words of advice before we we end this webinar for 2022 uh we'll start with you christy i know you talk about your great plans but you know i guess just um in terms of delivery and uh, concerns that you you know mm-hmm. the other retailers experience any words of advice I think um, I think for e-commerce to work, you need a really reliable delivery partner. It's very important. Mm. Uh, when I say reliable, is uh, what I mean is you know when like when you deliver a huge volume huge volume of items, you know, um, they're, 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 when you just when you deliver very low volume, you you can't feel any problems. Right. There's no problem. But once the volume hits a certain level consistently, like what we are right. experiencing. A lot of funny things start happening. For instance, you know, parcels start start going missing, damage, blah blah right. blah. So these are all part and parcel of the business. You know, uh, regardless of which delivery provider you right. use, these things will still happen. You know. Right. Uh, so yeah. when I say reliable, I mean that the delivery partner, like for instance, if my parcel goes missing, the delivery partner must be able to acknowledge. And straight away, you know, offer me a resolution. Like maybe they refund, mm. refund it to refund me, or you know, there must be a mm. very strong service level agreement mm. between us and the delivery partner. Everyone mm. always say they can do, but when the problem right. comes, they cannot settle. So right. this is my experience. Huh? So I'm very careful when it comes to delivery partners. There are only very few good ones, but you need right. to pick the good ones and uh, work with them. Right. Yeah. It's very interesting. You were saying part and parcel, right? Yeah, pun intended. intended. Um, but also you, you, reliable, as you you were saying that when you're, when the deliveries start going higher and, well, things will happen, right? And yes. it is when, the, that's when customers start complaining and yes. that gets on your social media and that is when the issue. So if you don't start looking at this earlier, um, you know, yes. you, then it's going to be a, 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 a concern for your business if you don't take uh, delivery into consideration, right? Uh, yes. Vernon, words of wisdom from you? Um, so what we are noticing is that there's tremendous uh, opportunities in the market right now. I think as Jane mm. rightly pointed out, uh, many people are moving into the uh, opening up new businesses. Right. Um, and the thing is, if you have survived, if your business has survived the pandemic so far, mm. and mm. Uh, you know, fingers crossed, God willing, uh, mm. knock on wood, they, this will not carry on for too much longer, mm. um, then actually you are way ahead of your many of your competitors, who many who did not survive the churn uh, over mm. the last two years has been right. quite incredible. So if you are in that situation, uh, there's, as I was saying, there's tremendous opportunities. In fact, uh, many people are looking at expansion right now. I think Christy is uh, hitting it the nail right on the head as mm. she's looking at expansion. Uh, yeah, because there's a lot of uh, vacuum that has appeared in the in the mm. whole retail space because many did not uh, survive, unfortunately, uh, the pandemic. Mm. So right. there is a lot of opportunity to get in there, but please be innovative. Uh, don't just don't think that going online and going digital is the cure all. Right. Uh, it is it is just a necessity. It is not the silver bullet. You right. do need to really innovate and differentiate yourself uh, out there. Right. Okay. And planning, right? Uh, Jane? Yeah. So uh, I'm completely uh, 
I completely re- uh, agree with you both. I think okay. if you survive the pandemic, you need to uh, mm. think of expansion. You need to think of how you can reach more customers and, and get your brand out there and start building branding uh, if, you, if you have not focusing on that. Um, right. Branding comes with uh, also customer loyalty, and right. these are the people that will repeat purchase uh, and help you to, um, they, to they, they will be with you in the long run, not just a short right. run. Uh, right. And it's important, uh, Christy, what you said about reliable, right? Someone that you can work with that's reliable because uh, the the reputation is not on the delivery. The reputation is on your company if you don't work with someone that's reliable. So uh, on that note, thank you very much, Jane, Vernon and Christy. And of course, thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. And this webinar is powered by Lala Move Malaysia. And we would also appreciate it if you could fill in the feedback form. So the feedback form is posted in the comments section. Uh, so please help us to fill it up you know so that we can improve better only five questions so it shouldn't take too long so on that note i thank you everyone and have a safe and wonderful lunar new year in advance Uh, do more shopping (laughs) thank you thank you thank you